After months of preparing with anticipation and some nervousness towards surviving an entire week, camping, drinking, and riding a bike across my home state of Iowa, the time has finally come to prove to myself I can do it. All that's left is to pack everything up and drive the three and a half hours to Sergeant Bluff, this year's starting point. RAGBRAI, as it's known, stands for Registers, as in the Des Moines Registers, Annual Great Bicycle Ride Across Iowa. And it's on its 49th, going into 50th year. Started in 1973 when register rider Donald Call accepted the challenge of his colleague John Karras to ride across the state on a bicycle and write articles about his experiences, accepting on the grounds that Karras also ride with him. Once the plan was approved, the public was invited to join. From just some 300 cyclists that first year, Ragbri has become the largest bike touring event in the world. Each year, it seems to draw more riders from more diverse places around the globe, with the 2022 count coming in over 18,000. And that's just registered riders. There can also be thousands more so-called pirates. Routes always run west to east, from the Missouri River to the Mississippi to take advantage of winds usually out of the west in late July, while distances can range between 400 and 540 total miles. Once in Sergeant Bluff, it's as simple as choosing a random spot to set up camp before going to explore the Ragbri Expo, where Ragbri officially kicks off, as well as being the largest cycling expo in the Midwest. Well, this has definitely got a state fair, a carnival style atmosphere going on. They have the kind of a bike sculpture here, which is really cool, that everybody's taking photos in front of. Pretty sweet sculpture, I'll tell you that. For me, the highlight of the expo was the unicycling unicorn, who apparently is pretty famous in his own right, and I guess for good reason. And if you're not smiling by now, I don't know what's gonna make you. <laughs> It doesn't have to be money. Luckily, the rain held off mostly until the end of his set. We didn't escape the weather completely. There's some lightning now. I'm gonna head back and eat real quick and probably just uh, go to camp for the night. But before I could make it back to camp, the sky opened up and forced me into a DQ. Fortunately, the sky cleared again, allowing me to get back to camp in a slightly less wet state. It's a very, very windy day, and if you can't already tell by the brim of my hat, it is also really hot. I think it's 93 degrees, and uh, it is very humid too, so I'm already sweating, and I expect this to be the next seven days of my life. Well, it's about 10 o'clock, and the rain has let up for a little while, so I was out talking to some of the people around here. Um, I got this cool hat at the Red Ride Trailer. So you might see that a lot more this week. And uh, I've got kind of a disheveled mess here, but I am packing it in for the night and I will see you tomorrow morning. As if the humidity and wind aren't bad enough. Well, good morning. It's just past five o'clock in the morning. I think it's about 5.15, 5.20 right now. And uh, you can already see that people are getting ready to go. Um, I wouldn't say everybody's up, but I would say a good third of the people are up and ready to go. Um, we've got a beautiful sunrise behind us here, and uh, I think it's gonna be a good day. But I've still gotta pack up everything behind me here in the tent and uh, get that to the trucks, and then I can get on the road. All right, everything is pretty close to packed except for the tent, and I've got my breakfast of two bananas and a caffeine tablet. The weather seems perfect this morning, and the forecast says it's gonna stay that way. We can only really hope after yesterday. Which leg do you want it on? Um, this side right here. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. So she was nice enough to uh, do the time-honored tradition of putting Virgin on my leg because I am a first-timer here. Uh, so they can see it on my left side as they're passing me, they can, you know, chat me up. In order to get all my camping gear to the next overnight town, I have to get my duffel bag to the Ragbri baggage trailer by 8 a.m., which I made sure to find yesterday and is why I camped where I camped. Each bag is weighed to make sure it's under 50 pounds. Luckily, mine weighs 27, so I'm okay. Plus, it just leaves room for souvenirs. So this is what all the training and preparation has been for. It's the official day one start. Registers annual great bicycle ride across Iowa. Please tell me this team is called the Tandem Tutus. Oh, it is now. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. We're getting close to the city limits of Sergeant Bluff here, and it looks like more people are lined up along the road. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. That is awesome, dude. 
Today's route is one of the shortest on the way to our overnight town of Ida Grove, but I hear the hills in western Iowa can be quite intense. Just outside Sergeant Bluff, riders are asked to ride in silence for a time to remember past riders who have perished on Ragbri. Known as the Mile of Silence, it's a somber reminder to stay alert of your body and surroundings and ride safe. Have a great day! Thank you, you too. Well, it's about 7.20 and we're making our first appearance in Bronson here. Looks like they're ready for us. With the first stop of Bronson being so close, I decided not to stay in Bronson because I don't need a Bloody Mary or breakfast. I'm gonna head on to Anthem. Coming out of Bronson there, you learn uh, Iowa's really not flat. So if you're coming to Iowa for biking, just know that uh, definitely not totally flat. As you ride, you'll notice bike shops set up at intersections, making repairs for the morning's unlucky riders. First hour down, about 12.7 miles, and I already need a water fill up, and they've got refills right here for me. So the extremely fun part is riding down the hills, but it's a hell of a lot of work to get up the hills over here. Yeah. The sloth crew, huh? Yep. All right, so we're coming into our midday town of Anthon, and um, it's been 25 miles and only about an hour and a half, maybe about two actually, according to my Strava app. So if I'm not mistaken, Anthon is only a small town of a couple thousand people, like a lot of towns here in Iowa. And um, coming through and right by here, we're bringing about 18,000 today, I believe. With its 545 residents, Anthon is about the same size as the town that I grew up in, Kanawha. And with this many people roaming around, crossing the road reminds me of the streets in Vietnam. Can I get a Tailwinds? Yeah. Thank you much. You're welcome. Ragbri has also teamed up with Big Grove Brewery out of Iowa City, just down the street from where I used to live, to make an amazing beer. Other than good beer, water horses are pretty important to keep riders hydrated throughout the day, with regular water bottles either being free or around $2. Oh, it's so fluffy. Somewhere between Anthem and Battle Creek, signs started to appear on the road for the highest point of the day. And in case you can't tell, that's good news because it means the majority of the remaining way to Ida Grove is downhill. Well, we haven't quite made it to the next town, Battle Creek, but uh, we have stopped at probably the most fun place so far. It's got the dunk tank, it's got the silly inflatable tube men, and whatever this thing is, this bike sculpture with hay bales. Since this farm is one of the main out-of-town stops for today, it's the perfect place to relax and check out what other people are riding. There are even maps to show where other riders are from, yeah, oh. The famous Mr. Porkchop bus is parked right on the side of the road. <laughs> but you'll have to wait in a pretty long line to enjoy it. <laughs> if you're not hungry, you can also grab a beer and check out the livestock brought in by the FFA. Hey there, buddy. How are you? For me, I decided to skip the chop and beer and take a much needed nap under a tree before rejoining the push to Ida Grove. It could definitely be hills up here. How many shots? He looks good. Um, I don't know. And how about you? What do you I'm have? I'm not in this group, but I'll take a double gin if nobody else I is think here. here. <laughs> They're out. You're in. All right. Tony. Thank you, sir. Where you been? Woo. As you can see, Rick is quite the popular uh, person out here on the road because he's got free fresh gin and tonic with lime. I think we've just reached Battle Creek, which is the second to last town. Um, next up will be Ida Grove, which will be our overnight town tonight. In celebration of almost being to our destination today, I'm going to treat myself with a homemade apple pie if they still have it, which they haven't crossed it out yet, so I hope they do. Yes, right here. I would love one. Apple pie, there Thank you go. Thank you very much. You're you have welcome. a good one. Even though it's not warm, it's still well worth it.
The pie was delicious, but uh, it didn't satiate my entire appetite, so I've come to this grilled cheese stand to get a grilled cheese with bacon. Got it, classic Absolutely. bacon. Coming up, last sandwich of the day. Well, there's definitely one thing you can say about Rag Rye. It'll definitely make you be willing to pay $9 for a uh, grilled cheese and bacon. Cheers. And you know it's getting to be sort of the end of the day when they uh, roll through and close down the town because um, we've got to get to Ida Grove before six. Our destination for tonight, Ida Grove, is only seven miles away and the terrain looks like it's going to be fairly flat. So that's going to be a nice reprieve and a nice end to the day because of all those hills. I've actually talked to people that said in the four to seven years that they have ridden Ragbri that that was the hardest day they have ridden. Hello! Found my setup spot for the night here on the inside of this track here. Um, I'm really tired and I'm ready to just kind of lay around for a while and then go explore downtown a little bit later. Maybe have a couple beers and relax. So they're selling something called a chop in a glove. It's a pork chop in a glove. I think I'm gonna get one of those six bucks. I will take one of those pork chop in a gloves. I do not have correct change though. That's okay. I get the glove for free then, right? That's right. You do. Oh, good. I didn't pay for a glove. Thank you much. You have a good one now. You too. Thank you. Well, there's no false advertising here. It's legitimately a giant pork chop and a glove for you to eat it with. This glove fits like shit, but the pork chop tastes amazing. She's about to make me a lemonade, man. Hey, I want one of those too. We're all in the same boat today. I'm a huge fan of Asian food, and when I saw that there was an Asian booth here, I really wanted to get it, but there was an enormous line earlier. Um, coming back from that concert there, uh, there was hardly anybody there, so I decided to get it. They serve one thing, it's soba noodles and uh, diced vegetables, and it's $13. Pretty expensive, but it smells delicious. Well, good morning. It's just about 6.30 in the morning again. Um, sun just rose, and uh, the tent has dew all over it, and the grass is pretty wet as well because it's about 20 degrees cooler than it was yesterday, um, or even the night before where it was about 80, 81 all through the night. It is 61 right now. And actually, the guy behind me here just made a great point that it's uh, pretty nice to not be stinky before you even start. From Ida Grove today, our final destination is Pocahontas, and as you can see, it is college jersey day, so I've got my Hawkeye attire on here and even Hawkeye socks. Go Hawks. Also, if you're watching this in the future and you think not bringing a sleeping bag is an option, don't do it. Bring the sleeping bag for sure because I wasn't gonna do it in the beginning and uh, last night it was pretty clutch to keep me warm. The line for baggage drop off this morning is a lot longer than yesterday. Yeah. So this guy has a good word of advice. Drop your bag toward the baggage truck and then just walk around with everybody else because this thing goes all the way over there. Oh my God, Graham, are you famous? <laughs> Super famous now. Oh Free game. <laughs> <laughs> I really wasn't kidding about the line. We waited about a half an hour. So this morning the weather's a little more chilly. Honestly, it feels really good because I haven't started sweating quite yet. Um, and there's a few rolling hills out of Ida Grove here that everybody's just taking really easy. We're 11 and a half miles in and a uh, nice little stop here to get a banana <laughs> and a cliff bar. Peanut butter banana is the choice. That's right. awesome. You have a good one, thank you. you. Always make sure to follow the color of the banana because otherwise you might have leg cramps later. So we're crossing over a main road here so they actually have to stop everything for us. This is a tandem recumbent, isn't it? Wow. Oh, That's awesome and you're hot friends so even yeah. better. Yeah. Go Hawks. He's a graduate. Same here. Thank you. Oh. oh. There's a cone there. There's a couple more cones, just be careful. Having already had my banana and cliff bar, I once again decided against stopping in town for breakfast, but Galva did have some interesting things downtown in the park, like this big US Army artillery piece or this spinning thing. Not dangerous at all or even a public xylophone. Today the hills are so much better. We're getting more into the flat part of the state. Uh, 
flat in quotation marks because it's just nice gentle rolling hills now, which is more what I'm used to and where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going for the ride of a lifetime. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a good one. Hey there, Buford, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> What is RAGBRAI without the roadside gimmicks? I'm not quite sure, but somebody put a good point on it and said that uh, if you don't do the gimmicks, it's just riding across the state 460 miles like a crazy person. So this Lake Time Brewery Wheat is actually a local in Clear Lake, which is right next to Mason City. So if you're ever traveling through North Iowa and head to Clear Lake, check out Lake Time Brewery. Are you streaming or is no. this just for YouTube? Just for YouTube. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that nice guy that just came up to me, his name was Randy, and uh, he was telling me a little bit about the history of the town here, and they were known for being a huge popcorn processing place. And that's why they've got free popcorn all over, and most of the signs relating to places in town all have popcorn logos. And even though it's just past 10.30, uh, it feels a little late to be drinking a beer since I've seen so many other people doing it. Well, on the way out of Schaller, it's starting to rain a little bit. It feels really nice, but I hope that uh, it doesn't catch up with us too much and actually start pouring. America. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so Stickers are these terrible. Little Hawkeye fans are giving me a sticker and they're going to put it somewhere back here. <laughs> Go Hawks! I don't think this man back here really appreciated that. Yeah. Well, they ran out of the most popular item, the hot beef sundae, so I had to settle for a breakfast brat and a scatcheroo. Good run. Alright, well, coming into Namaha now and joined up with the Peloton there for a little bit. About 30 people from what I can count, and uh, it's pretty fun riding actually. So I found some people I already had found and we're playing group for them. First time was a one cup win. Three, two, one, two, go! Oh! <laughs> set, set it with, oh! the left hand is for setting, the right hand is for flipping. Oh! Two one flips in a row to win. You won a tournament. And even though they just ran out of beer here, there is a water slide to keep everybody entertained. And as if the slip and slide wasn't an early highlight, good old Rick was back to making his roadside drinks. You sir are a saint. To Rick. About 2.20 coming into the Newell Fonda area and the rain has picked up slightly. Looking at the weather report, it looks like it's gonna be probably almost like this or a little even heavier rain for the next few hours, so probably the rest of the ride. Even cooler than getting free drinks from uh, Rick Stewart, we've got Murph here on the ride. Hi. She is from the Murphology podcast and is one of the people on RAGBRAI that kind of sets everything up for us. Hello. And gives a lot of tips. <laughs> I learned a lot of stuff from her. And the, the best tip is don't worry about riding in the rain. We're not- It's we, actually pretty we, good right now, yeah. We are waterproof. It feels really, really good. Also on this short stop, Team Stiff introduced me to Matt Fippen, the new director of RAGBRAI, who's done a really amazing job and refreshed my tattoo. A few more miles down the road, we stopped for another Iowa craft beer, caught some talented jugglers, and enjoyed old school hacky sack until this happened. Oh yeah. Oh! <laughs> I call this a hacky sack. After being semi-adopted by Team Stiff and uh, getting a hacky in my beer, we got 16 miles left. Consider that a win. So I think the last stop I'm gonna make before Pocahontas tonight is here for a good piece of rhubarb pie. They have 20 left. And uh, they had 2,000 to start with. Yes. I know. 
I do better under than I do over. Like, like, 32,000, slice of the pie. <laughs> I can't believe those rhubarb is the leftover. <laughs> That's what I think. Got some wedgie stickers we're getting here at the pie tent. The first few our parents did them, um, they didn't have bike shorts, so they got wedgies. <laughs> oh my gosh. In 95. Uh, excellent. So you've been team wedgie since 95. When I was eight, 19, yeah. Wow. wow. One of the last remaining pies for the day. That is delicious. Yeah, we gotta move it. That's so good. You know what? Wait, so just, thank big, you so much to the people here. Well, if you get nothing out of that other than uh, stop for church pies, stop for church pies. They're awesome. When you're late, you ride on open roads. My mirror fell off. Had to reattach that guy. Had to turn on the lights because we're coming in a little bit late. These 10 year old kids are out here putting us to shame. Team Millennium Falcon, I think, is what they're called. And they're keeping up with the best of us. Even though we're at the end of the night, they've just got so much more energy. Finally, around seven, I rolled into town, past the shower lines, and found a pretty great place to set up camp. Now that I've made it to Pocahontas, it is official. This is the longest day of cycling I've ever done. 71.2 miles as the official number. And uh, I think I probably rode about 75 if you include some of the stops, different um, on and off places and around the towns. But I feel incredible. I feel a lot better than I did yesterday. And honestly, I could go for quite a bit longer. So I'm not so nervous or apprehensive about the century day. Couldn't tell you if it's out of an abundance of laziness, but uh, the snack shack right next to me has pulled pork nachos and giant pickles. So I'm gonna go for that for about $13. After I demolished those, it was straight downtown with the English lads I'd met earlier at Rick's. Here with Charlie and Laza, my new uh, English mates. They've flown all the way from London. Uh, because they heard about Rag Rye on a blog. Charlie had never been to an American saloon before, so it was perfect timing that the polka band he wanted to see was already playing inside. continued for a while, but fortunately, the snack stand opened again at 4.30 to start serving coffee and breakfast burritos. And just like my alarm clocks, I ignored them until about 5.30 before succumbing to the need for sustenance, then falling back asleep until about 7.15. The weather is pretty sunny right now. It's about 7.30, so I need to get a move on. I'm actually a little late today because had a couple of drinks. Today's route takes us from Pocahontas to Emmitsburg with the distance of the first day and the rolling hills of yesterday. So by all metrics, shorter and easier, but that leads us into the 100 mile day tomorrow. So as we're exiting Pocahontas, there's a sign back there that says yeah, it was, <laughs> but bump, but bump, it was but nice bump. sleeping with you. A lot of tongue in cheek out here on the road. To start the morning, we pedal towards Havelock, some drafting behind a leisurely ambulance. Upon arriving, we were greeted by a long row of excellent condition classic John Deere's dating way back to the 1930s. After a quick stop, it was again time for pie. So I'm not mad at all. I keep getting lucky and getting the last remnants of rhubarb pie. I don't know why people don't like it or uh, maybe they made too much, but there always seems to be rhubarb pie. Somebody told me it's more sour. It's excellent. It is. Not too far down the road, I had the chance to meet an incredibly inspiring coach. Just another reason why people in Iowa are the best. Meet Ted Lasso. In beautiful Havelock, Iowa. Woohoo! Welcome. Thank you so much. And not long after that.
I started to understand the concept of second breakfast. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. All right. Here we go. Oh. 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 Good. Whoop. Let's get two. Yeah. <laughs> so this is three for three. I'm starting to make this a daily tradition, and thank you, Rick. Currently rolling through the midpoint town today, which is West Bend. Um, pretty much getting every chance to sit in the shade that I can because it is bright, there's hardly any clouds, and it's starting to get pretty hot. Uh, but West Bend is best known for the largest grotto in the world, the Grotto of the Redemption, and it's actually right in front of me. We're kind of rolling past it now, so I go check it out for a couple of minutes. The shrine of the Grotto of the Redemption is made up of nine grottos depicting the life of Jesus. Started by Father Paul Daberstein in 1912 after recovering from pneumonia, it took nearly 42 years to complete. Made from many different natural materials, including precious stones and petrifications set in concrete, it sees over 100,000 visitors annually. So I've come across Daniel here from Tasmania and uh, he's doing this on skates just off the couch. So needless to say, he's a little bit more involved in this than most people. <laughs> well, we're all making it across Iowa, you know, human powered all the way. Because it's not about how fast you get there, it's about getting there. So kind of an impulse stop here up to the side of the road again. And uh, we've got 13 and a half miles, well, no, I think it's 12 and a half miles, so about 13 miles left until we get to Emmitsburg tonight, feeling good, and they have got honey sticks. So this is natural Iowa honey, and they have uh, energy bites, but I've already ate mine, they're already gone. As pretty much every stop I've been on, it's awesome, super nice people. we got this young lady here at, how old are you again? 65. 65 and her first drag by, so. Yes. Definitely not alone out here. Not even joking, I got back on the bike and lasted about two minutes before I found a pickle stand. <laughs> so these are big ass pickles, but I've already eaten half of it and they are delicious. They do stop cramps, so definitely uh, pick these up every once in a while or some bananas, but bananas have been exceedingly hard to find today. Seven miles to go until Emmitsburg, which is the uh, overnight town tonight, and we just came off of a pretty heavy headwind from the west and turned north, and it's so much better now. Um, I think the last seven miles is just on this road, so it's gonna be a pretty leisurely ride in and I think we're going to be early for the deadline of usually six when they stop doing rag rye official things like the sag wagon or ambulances. All right maybe today wasn't as bad as I thought because it actually took me only about 30 40 seconds to find a spot right next to the showers which uh, an overpriced shower doesn't actually sound too bad right now so that may be my next stop. It does look like it could rain as well we've got a little bit darker clouds but that was actually nice as well coming in because the sun wasn't beating down so much and I'm sure I've got lines everywhere from the glasses and the hat, even though I put on 55 SPF twice today. Oh, I took that cold shower and it was definitely, it felt kind of life-changing after today. It wasn't the worst day, but it wasn't the best day, and we've got 105 miles to go tomorrow. It'll be the first century day since 1984. If you've ever wondered how 18,000 people charge their phones, here's a small glimpse. Emmitsburg was originally settled by immigrants from the Great Famine of Ireland in the 1840s and 50s and is named for Irish nationalist Robert Emmett, who met his own end at 25 after leading a rebellion against British rule in Ireland in 1803. In preparation for the century ride, I decided to get a proper meal. I didn't really want to eat at the kind of street food fair that they have there, so I came to Don Jose. Great Mexican restaurant so far, and they're incredibly fast. I ordered maybe five minutes ago. I've got my beer and my food already. I would like to thank Don Jose for the excellent food and the service. It was 
really fast. You can even see that one of the waiters was running around the restaurant trying to get um, the food out as fast as possible. That is amazing. Um, it was delicious as well. And now I'm heading down to the main area. Sorry, just a loud truck over here. Now I'm heading down to the main area again to go see the Pork Tornadoes, which is the cover band tonight. I stayed for a song before convincing myself to rest because tomorrow might actually be a long day. So Ragbra is always full of surprises. I met Jun here on my way back to camp and he's actually from Guangzhou, China. And uh, he's got his own Instagram and everything that he does for a, what is that, a Roloflex or? Uh, that's a Mamiya C33. The classic cameras, man. Thank I, you, man. I do photograph street artists and then, and then also Wear bikes. <laughs> nice. It's awesome to meet you. I hope you enjoy your ride and you enjoy too. Iowa while you're here. Will do. Next time, I travel through my home area as I struggle to complete day four's 105 mile challenge, find my favorite town of the entire ride, taste the best dairy products in Iowa, and try to push through to the end of Ragbri 2022. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and think I deserve your subscription, please click the subscribe button below along with the bell icon to be notified of all my new videos. Thanks again for watching this video and never stop adventuring.